Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to switch to English now because I want to welcome someone from abroad. We start the festival with a contribution uh, on the topic of sustainability, which plays a major role here at the festival. And yeah, we get direct input from abroad. I may introduce to you Neil Salvin. Neil Salvin has been researching and writing about digital education for the past 25 years. And he's currently a distinguished professor at Monash University in Melbourne. And we are very pleased that in him we have found someone who looks at this subject of sustainability from an Anglo-Saxon view. And that we have found someone with a modern and yeah, kind of critically reflective view on the topic. Neil Salvin is here and he will talk about sustainable education futures, that role can di what role can digital technology play. He's joining us from Melbourne. Welcome, Neil Salvin. Thank you very much. Thanks for such a wonderful introduction. And I would like to, first of all, thank you for inviting me to apologize for not being able to speak German. Um, you really don't want to hear my schoolboy German. And thanks for being on this call as well. And I can promise you that this is not going to be a talk about chat GTP. I want to talk about much more important things, I think, than that. So there are three parts to the title that I wanted to talk today. First of all is sustainability, as you said. And that for me, I think sustainability is the number one issue that we need to be talking about when we're talking about the future of education and the future of digital education. So I was really pleased to see it included on the list of conference topics. But people often talk about sustainability in quite broad, general, or even vague ways. And I want to be a little bit more precise. So taking the classic three pillars of sustainable development that were set out by the Brundtland Commission, I really want to focus on environmental sustainability of digital education how digital education bumps up against issues of environmental and ecological protection. And also the issue of social sustainability of digital education, how digital education bumps up against issues of social equity. And when you put these two aspects of sustainability together, we're talking about issues about eco justice and climate justice. So I really want to have a conversation around that. Now, the second part of the title is the future. And actually, it's futures plural. And I'm starting from the contention that the future is essentially unknowable. There's not one future that we're headed towards. We cannot predict what will happen, but we need to anticipate what might possibly happen and we can prepare ourselves accordingly. So I think any take on the university of the future is not a matter of forecasting, but it's a matter of foresight. And the last bit of my title, which I think it deserves explanation, is this idea of what role can digital technology play? I'm a digital researcher, and I think a lot of your conference will be about digital technologies. And a lot of our discussions about the future of education presume that digital technologies can play a central, if not ever-increasing role in the future university. The conversations that we have around higher education are stuck in this mindset of abundant and excessive use of digital technology. We, seem to, we tend to see the future university as profoundly digital, always on, everything in the cloud, live streaming, second screening, increasingly automated and virtual, everything on a platform, everything digitized. In short, I think a lot of the conversations we have about the future of education and the future of universities tend to have a very cornucopian approach. We presume that there's endless, limitless, digitization. But in this talk, I wanted to challenge us to anticipate possible futures where the continuation of our current always on excessive, expansive use of digital technology might not be possible. In fact, it might not be preferable. So the key questions that I want to think about today are, are the first two here. How can we think about the future of university in light of the growing environmental harms that are arising from digital technology production, digital technology use, digital technology disposal. And also how can we talk about university futures in light of growing environmental disruptions to digital technology connectivity and digital technology use? I think these are really, really interesting but important questions. And these raise some really big problems that I'd love for us to talk about today and for the foreseeable future. 
Now, the two things I think that are really in, important to think about are, first of all, this idea of the, the, the environmental harms of digital education. So first of all, I'm, I'm really concerned about the ways in which current digitizations of education are fundamentally dependent on the consumption of digital technologies at excessive levels that do not help or in fact even exacerbate environmental and ecological harm. And recently there has been some talk about how our digital technology use in education is an environmental disaster waiting to happen. Now, of course, this is not a problem that's unique to education. Digital technologies are used in every area of society. Every area of society faces these issues. But it's certainly a problem that the digitization of education is utterly part of. And some of you will have come across literature already that makes the argument that all of the digital devices that we use, that all of the digital software that we use, that the cloud, everything has an environmental consequence. So what we see as virtual education has a material underpinning. So I think we have to acknowledge the excessive energy that we're using to store and train AI models. We have to acknowledge the environmental disaster that's the data center industry. And we also have to acknowledge the unsustainable reliance that we have on De manufacturing digital devices that are inherently dependent on the extraction of rare minerals and rare metals, and also how this eventually ends in the dumping, the toxic dumping of e-waste. So it, it's really difficult to precisely calculate the cumulative environmental burden incurred by the continued production consumption of digital technology in education, but we can have some very good guesses. Most of us now are aware of the environmental disaster that's Bitcoin. I think people say it incurs the, the um, electrical consumption equivalent to a country like Norway or Thailand. Bitcoin is an outlier, but it's not the only aspect of digital technology that has environmental consequences. Even standard AI modeling for a deep learning technique incurs carbon emissions that are equivalent to one month of New York City and cost around $100 billion. We know about the real cost of data storage centers in terms of their use of energy and their use of water. We know about digital device production. 80% of energy is expended in the manufacture of our digital devices. And even manufacturing one desktop computer expends 240 kilograms of fossil fuels and 150, sorry, 1,500 kilograms of water. So these are these are not inconsequential environmental burdens, and they're only going to increase the more technology we use. And people across the IT industry are very, very concerned about this. And I think if people are concerned in general, then it behoves us in education to also take these warnings on board. If the current rate of computing um, development is unsustainable, even within the next few decades, that I think it's very, very important that we begin to think about this in education. This is a big wake up call, I think, for dreams of the digital university and digital first education. Now, there's a flip side to this. It's not just environmental harms arising from digital technology production that I think we need to be worried about. We also need to think about the fast changing planetary conditions and environmental breakdown and climate disruptions that are beginning to disrupt our capacity to actually use digital technology at all. Now, this was brought home to me when I first moved to Australia about seven years ago, and we had bushfires. Um, we had bushfires, we have bushfires most years, but this, this year we had an email came around from our university pro vice chancellor saying data centers and data storage will be unreliable for the next week due to the bushfires. Please only use essential technology in the university. And that really got me thinking, what is essential? Is me on my laptop sending emails essential? Is me using PowerPoint for my lecture essential? Maybe the education faculty is not the most essential user. Maybe it's the science faculty. We have a heart hospital now on campus. Maybe they should be. And it really brought home to me the fact that we couldn't rely on constant connectivity and this always on mentality. If we begin to think about the environmental disruptions that we've experienced all around the world, including in Germany over the past 10 years, floods, fires, winds, and other climate-driven catastrophes, these are growing in frequency, intensity, and unpredictability and impact. And part of the collateral damage of all of these events has been increasingly severe disruptions to core elements of the worldwide digital infrastructure. 
So it's increasingly becoming the case that in Australia in the summer, you cannot always use the internet. It seems reasonable, I think, to anticipate that this is going to carry on and it may impact ever more significantly on the availability and functionality of the core digital systems and structures that we talk about when we talk about the digital university. So what do we do? Just over the past few years, 2021, a lot of the internet connectivity across Western Africa just disappeared due to widespread flooding, causing undersea avalanches that disrupted the, the internet cables. 2022 in um, London in the summer, major IT failures in some of the main hospitals in London, which just had to shut down their IT for three weeks due to the heat wave. Even this year, we're looking at droughts in Taiwan, limiting the um, ability to manufacture semiconductors. There'll be another semiconductor shortage. Now, climate-driven disruptions such as these are becoming increasingly commonplace. So I think we need to take it really seriously that there's a faltering environmental sustainability of our digital infrastructure. So all in all, my thinking around this is that perhaps we need to think differently about digital education. Maybe the digitizations of education that have come to prominence over the past few decades are not sustainable and neither are they even preferable. I think we possibly need to think differently. Now, there are lots of people beginning just to think about this in education. So these are very early ideas. And there is a little literature, which I'm very happy to kind of point you towards um, in the Q&A. But it, it raises the question about how might we anticipate future universities in light of these interconnected crises that we're seeing around environmental and societal instability? How might we think differently about climate constrained digital education? So I guess this is a heads up, but it's possibly a, a kind of pessimistic heads up. But I think we can think about ways forward. It's not completely apocalyptic. And I just wanted to talk through very briefly three possible scenarios that we might want to start thinking about in our area of interest around education in the future. I found when I talk about this that a lot of people don't react well to these issues being raised. A lot of people say there is no problem whatsoever. Everything's fine. Or we are not part of the problem in education. Or actually, we are part of the solution. And to be honest with you, nobody knows the answer. As I said, futures are, are essentially unknowable. But I do know that we need to start engaging with these issues. So the three responses, I think, to the problems that I just sketched out might be answered in these three different ways. We might want to think about ways that digital education might actually be part of a, not solution, but a way of ameliorating um, the worst effects of, of environmental disruption. Or we might want to say that green tech and developments in um, uh, from, the, from the IT industry might actually save us. Or, and this is actually my own position, I think we possibly need to radically rethink the types and forms and ways that we use digital technology. But all of these responses I think are valid and all of these responses are things that we really need to start thinking about in the education sector. So just to go through these three different scenarios very briefly, we might argue that digital education actually might be a force for environmental good. And you do hear these arguments raised when you talk about environmental sustainability and the future of education. One might argue that digital technologies are a really amazing way of developing environmental education and developing new forms of environmental political awareness and fostering global communities, particularly of young people and students that are centered around climate change awareness and action. And certainly a lot of the worldwide climate strikes have been underpinned by very savvy use of social media and very savvy use of digital technology. So we could argue actually having digital technologies as part of education can support this. And actually it's also argued increasingly that online education might actually be a way of re re overcoming carbon um, heavy ways of face-to-face -face education. For example, online education can be seen to reduce carbon emissions associated with campus-based travel and campus-based education and all of the power consumption and all of the, the other environmental harms that that incurs. It would be nice to think that things are this simple. And this certainly appeals to, I think, a lot of people in education technology, the idea that actually education technology can be a fix or a savior. But at the moment, we simply do not know the extent to which 
digital transformation of learning can help reduce a university's carbon footprint. It's just a, a hunch. So the big challenge for any of you on the call that want to subscribe to this first scenario is we really need to test this. We really need to explicitly work towards this aim in every form of education technology that we develop and procure and implement from here onwards. And we also need to rigorously evaluate these ideas and claims. I'm not convinced necessarily that having more and more online education is necessarily environmentally beneficial, but I'd love to be surprised. So even if you don't agree with anything else I'm going to say for the rest of this morning, please promise me that anything you talk about in terms of the future university is going to be something that works towards mitigating climate change. Now, that's one argument that sometimes people raise. The second argument is around this idea of green technology. And I think when people in ed tech think about these issues, a lot of people say, well, you know, hopefully the IT industry and policymakers are going to save us. And there certainly is a big push for clean technology, low carbon, green growth solutions. So we're seeing pledges from the likes of Google and Microsoft that they're going to make greater use of renewable energy or forms of decarbonized energy and bioenergy. We're seeing IT industry efforts to improve the energy and resource efficiencies of their future products, data centers, and this idea that we can reset the production of digital devices and consumption in, in terms of the, the circular economy. It might be that the tech industry has everything covered and it might be that the tech industry is going to save us. And again, this fits a kind of solutionist mentality, but again, these claims need proper discussion in education circles and proper scrutiny. And for me, I think there are many reasons to remain dubious about this claim that green tech is just around the corner and will help us um, overcome any environmental issues uh, uh, linked with our use of digital technology. There are serious doubts that any decarbonizing activities can be enacted at sufficient speed or sufficient scale. Decarbonizing technology is important, but it's only one part of the environmental problems that arise from any form of digital use. And most importantly, these solutions rely on the profit-driven activities of IT industry actors. And big tech companies have very poor track records of actually meeting their pledges around carbon emissions and e-waste. I was reading recently a report on, um, so this is about how... Um, tempting it is to think that a technological higher power is going to save us from ourselves. I was reading a report on um, data storage centers um, from MIT, from Stephen Montserrat, and they were arguing that the promises around the data storage and the, and the data center industry around reducing the environmental impact of everything that they do, when you actually dig down and look at them, they're not enforceable. And they don't even appear to be feasible given the exponential growth of data and digital data that we hope to see over the next few years. So I'm dubious about this as well, but I'm willing and hope to be surprised. So if any of you that want to push the green tech and the clean tech um, future for the future university, if you believe this, we need to get our universities engaging with this properly now and evaluating it and really taking this scenario seriously. So there, there are at least two different ways we can be super positive. The third scenario is actually possibly the one that I would subscribe to. And this is a little less, um, I wouldn't say optimistic, but it's a little less um, kind of Pollyanna-ish, but a bit, it retains hope, but it's a kind of skeptical hope. This is the idea, and I'm really interested in this, that perhaps we need to radically rethink everything that we think about universities and digital technologies, that we consider what we might call radically sustainable ways in which we engage with digital technologies and digital technologies that work towards the common good and sustainable futures. So not just waiting for the development of green tech solutions that will allow us to carry on doing essentially the same things that we've always done, lots of data in the cloud, big learning management systems, platforms, devices, that we actually radically rethink, scale down and slow down the digital technologies that we do engage in. And there are some really interesting arguments that are arising around the, the areas of computer science, for example, programming and hacker communities that push this idea of radically sustainable computing. And these are potentially powerful ways, I think, to meaningfully address the social and environmental sustainability issues that we're seeing around current technology forms. 
And there are lots of various schools of thought that I might direct you towards in these different areas. There's a really interesting community, commu computing within limits, within the computer science community, that's trying really hard to reimagine the development of digital technology through principles of restraint and constraint. This is the idea that we have limited um, uh, resources, limited capacity, and we need to think about using digital technologies in radically leaner ways. There's a really interesting um, academic, Tillman Santeras at the Technical University of Berlin, who pushes a similar idea of digital sufficiency, which is committed to the absolute reduction of resource and energy demands in ways that can maintain general education conditions, but actually ultimately widen opportunities for people to lead flourishing lives. There's a really interesting literature around permacomputing that applies permaculture principles to um, the way that we use technology. And the degrowth and post-growth movements as well are beginning to think about ways that digital technologies might link with this idea of moving beyond the idea of, of permanent growth and think about equitable downscaling, using less of what we already have, slowing down, and radically rethinking how communities choose to appropriate digital technologies for specific purposes and in ways that um, minimize harm to both the community and the earth system. So there's some really interesting ideas here. I've written about them at great length in various papers. And again, I'm happy to share the links. And there are some tangible ways forward that these radically sustainable alternatives um, suggest. The idea of salvage computing, for example, about um, not disposing of any technology, but re recombining technological parts to, to, to kind of reuse, repair and recycle. Frugal programming is really interesting where we actually design software that's not bloated, but it actually is very sleek and minimalist and does just the, the, the basics of what's required. There are some really interesting sufficiency movements in terms of hardware sufficiency and software sufficiency. All of these things, I think, allow us to imagine and anticipate alternate futures where digital technology is still part of education, but it's not the driving main part. And it helps um, it, it work in some instances and it's not there in other instances. So it's just a very different way to think about what we need to get rid of, how we withdraw from what are clearly unsustainable forms of digital education. And there are many forms of digital education, I would argue, that are not sustainable. To encourage existing practices that may well be environmentally, if not ameliorating, at least sufficient, and then develop completely new forms of sustainable digital education. So as I said, this is just a provocation. This is just an alternate way of thinking about the university of the future. I'm not saying that this is definitely going to happen. I'm not saying we have to all think about this, but we can't just imagine everything in terms of more digital, more technology, increased digitization. I think we need to think slightly differently and imagine alternative futures given the environment that we're now living in and given the, you know, the, the, the climate summer that you're all approaching. There's lots to think about. So I think we need to think very, very carefully about these ideas. We need to take the idea of green tech seriously. We need to take the idea that perhaps digital technology and education might be somehow allowing us to, to kind of be greener in the way that we, we think of the, the future university. But I think we also need to think more carefully about this idea of scaling down, scaling back and not being digitally digital first. Now, of course, None of these problems and none of these issues and none of these challenges are unique to education. But I work in education, so I'm talking about education. If I worked in finance, I'd be talking about fintech or med tech or ad tech and every other area of technology. This is a, these are challenges that every area of society has to deal with. But I think it's something that education can lead on. This is something that the education community can actually take a stand on, can lead very visibly. And education is a great way of getting these issues across to communities, to students, to parents, to, to local employers. Education can be a beacon for this type of change. And I think it's really, really exciting that we, we can actually lead on this. So what to do? There are lots of people at this conference, and I think it's all our responsibilities. I hope student organizations are taking these messages on board. University managers, university lecturers, civil society actors, the tech industry. There are tangible things we can do, I think, in the short term. We can think about if we are developing digital literacy programs, a key part of digital literacy is, is working with students and lecturers to think about the environmental consequences of technology, to talk through these issues. 
I think we can think about the responsible procurement of technology in ways that acknowledge environmental burdens. And we can establish cultures of reuse and repair and recycling within our universities. In the medium term, I really want to focus on digital education only when it's of clear environmental benefit and cut back everything else. And perhaps in the long term, begin to radically reimagine what digital education might be in ways that are, as I say, resilient and radically sustainable. So there's not unfortunately been enough time to just scratch the surface of what's a really complex and contentious set of problems. But I think these are problems that need to urgently continue to be confronted across all our conversations. So here's my concluding challenge. If the current intensive forms of digitalization and digital technology use will be no longer sustainable, how can we anticipate future university forms that are technologically feasible, but socially just and ecologically coherent? And you might all think completely differently to me about this issue, but the most important thing is that we continue to think about the issue and talk about it. So hopefully I've convinced you that, that something has to be done. The pressing question now is what do we do? And how bold are we prepared to be? Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. We actually have a couple of questions, and um, let's go right to the first questions uh, from Lara Sendgraf. Um, she has a question really concerning campus life, and uh, I'm curious how your radical view <laughs> is, uh, might influence the answer. I have a question concerning hybrid teaching as a way to make teaching more flexible and accessible. A lot of teachers are unhappy that as soon as they offer hybrid lectures, nobody's showing up in the physical lecture hall. What would you tell them? <laughs> What's your answer? Well, as soon as you said people had questions, my immediate response is I have no answers. <laughs> I, I don't think there is, if there is an easy answer to any of this, I could tell you. I mean, this is slightly um, a sidebar conversation, but the hybrid lecture conundrum is interesting because in some ways the answer is perhaps to have really exciting online events and pedagogy and teaching and learning. And online teaching and learning, as everybody knows on this call, is very, very different to what you do in the room. And then on the flip side, if you do have students that live locally and you want to invite them into the campus, then you just have to have really exciting experiences that are completely socially focused and relationally focused and really rich forms of interaction in the room that will just draw people in. So I think we have to make everything that we do face to face a big event and a big kind of almost like a carnival and then you know people hopefully will come into the face-to-face -face things but perhaps when we teach there is an argument for separating these out but i think the value of a local education institution where people make short distances to travel in and, and be with others is something that is possibly environmentally um yeah we would want to encourage but also socially we'd like to encourage and i think it's great that you guys are running a hybrid conference I'm not saying we should never have hybrid conferences, but perhaps hybrid teaching is something we want to get about. We either are fully online, if it makes environmental sense, or we're fully face-to-face. -face. Um, and yeah, I, I, I sympathize. I have the same problem. Three people turning up to be in a room when we broadcast via Zoom is not joyous. It's not a great experience for anybody. So I think making anything face-to-face -face super rich, super, super, yeah, nobody wants to miss it almost like a concert or a celebration. Okay, thank you for your answer. And now a question on a completely different aspect of your talk. Do you think, Philip Hollerman asked this, do you think that tech companies will in the near future try to take over the education sector? They are already offering sub-degree programs and would certainly have the resources and solutions to take over the market, at least in the US or UK. What's your idea to that? Yeah, I mean, take over the market. I don't think they want to take over universities or take over education systems. So I don't think they think it's a product worth taking over, but I'm sure they would like to take the place of, of universities. So I think a lot of tech companies are angling. We can see Google, for example, already offering their own credentials for anyone that wants to work with Google. So if I wanted to work for Google, I wouldn't come to a university. I would go to Google. So I think there is certainly a, um, yeah, taking market share, um, and I think that's possibly something we need to be mindful of. But on the other hand, I don't think we need to paint big tech companies as a bad, evil monolith. There are lots of different big tech companies. 
Um, we're in the world now where we have to work with rather than necessarily against um, a lot of these corporations. So in some ways, it, we, we need to kind of work together. And I think some of the issues I've just sketched out in this talk, they're far bigger than, you know, public versus private or, you know, I think we really need to all pull together. And whenever we talk about digital education at the moment, it always involves big tech. And some of the radical sustainable uh, approaches to technology, which I was hinting at in my talk, are actually not involving technology at all. Uh, sorry, not involving big tech companies at all, but they're much more back to the 1980s and 1990s versions of computing, where people built things for themselves, where communities built, you know, and, and that there are, there's a lot to be learned from the kind of the, the pre-World Wide Web age of computing. Um, so we look at things like Raspberry Pi, for example, um, mini computers. There are some really interesting examples of how digital doesn't have to involve big tech either. But at the moment, yeah, no, I'm sure Google would love to take over the German education system and, and make lots of money from it. Thank you so much, Neil. Unfortunately, we don't have time to answer all the questions, but I can tell you there are a lot. So your ideas came up here and made people think, and that's what we want with this festival. So thank you for, for uh, giving those ideas to us here in Germany. And yeah, what time is it now in Melbourne? <laughs> Oh, it's six in the evening, so I'm six fine. Six in the I'm evening, have so have a, <laughs> yeah. have a nice evening and uh, see you soon. Thank you so much, Neil. Bye-bye. Wiedersehen. -bye.